Christian martyrdom has been there for so many centuries. It started from early Judaism and it entered into the Christian faith. And throughout the ancient history of Christianity, Christians were persecuted and they became martyrs for what they believe in, Jesus Christ. But today, most Christian martyrs have been persecuted for a lot of things. Although Christ is the source and model of what they have been persecuted for, we would like to look at what martyrdom is. Who is a martyr? Martyr comes from the Greek word martus, which signifies someone, a witness, who has a fact about somebody that he testifies to by way of observation. And this testimony or witness gets into Christian literature when early apostles of Jesus Christ were witnesses to all that Jesus did through his public observations and public ministry. So from the Greek word martus, which means a witness who testified to the facts of knowledge through public observation, through self-observation, this word enters into Christian literature where the apostles of Jesus Christ observed Jesus' life and they were witnesses to what he has done. A new shade of meaning came to who a martyr is. And in this new shade of meaning, the early Christians, especially the apostles of Jesus Christ, do not only witness to Jesus Christ, like how witnesses were doing in the court of justice, but now they were witnessing with their blood. And St. Stephen is the first of the martyrs in Christian literature. When you read the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verse 20, this is where we will find St. Stephen, who was the proto-martyr, the first martyr in Christendom. And here, he becomes the model for all martyrs. He witnessed his life to Christ and sealed this testimony, sealed this witness with his blood. So St. Stephen becomes the proto-martyr, the one who dies for Christ by witnessing with his blood. In the early centuries of Christianity, when Christianity was flourishing in the Roman Empire, there was a saying by Tertullian, a Christian scholar at the time, in his work called the Apologeticus. In this work, Tertullian was famously honored by saying that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. What is this? The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. This means that through their blood, the martyrs have sown a seed which becomes part and parcel of the church. Especially in the old Roman Empire, the ancient Roman Empire, Christians were killed. The Colosseums were places where Christians were killed. They were martyred. They witnessed with Christ. They witnessed themselves to Christ through the execution by their persecutors. So indeed, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Through the execution, through their witnessing, they become a seed for which we are benefiting today. So Tertullian is credited for that. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And through this apologeticus of Tertullian, we have recognized that martyrs have witnessed themselves, they have witnessed to Christ through the shedding of their blood. Being a martyr 
means more than simply being a Christian who is persecuted because of the faith. According to the Catholic Church's understanding, there is a specific and constant teaching of what true martyrdom is and what is required for it. In his 2006 apostolic letter, Pope Benedict XVI wrote to the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. And in this letter, this apostolic letter, he re-emphasized and reminded the congregation on the true tradition of what martyrdom is. He wrote that the martyrs of the past and those of our time gave and give their life a physio sanguinis, literary meaning shedding their blood freely and consciously in a supreme act of love witnessing to the faithfulness to Christ, to the gospel, and to the church. And Pope Benedict XVI goes on to say that if the motive for which these martyrs embraced martyrdom remains unchanged because Christ is the source and model of their martyrdom, then what remains changed is a cultural context and the strategies ex parte persecutories that is on part of the persecutors which means that the motive for which martyrs witnessed their lives always remained unchanged this motive is jesus christ but what remains changing always is the cultural context and how persecutors demanded to kill them in this apostolic letter, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth goes on to say that it is necessary that there is an irrefutable proof to readiness. And he gives two views of this. He says that this irrefutable proof to readiness on the part of the martyrs can be through the shedding of their blood or the outpouring of their blood and also the acceptance of martyrdom by the victim. And also Pope Benedict the Sixteenth says that the odium fide, that is the hatred of the faith on the parts of the persecutor may be ascertained, which means that the one who killed the martyr, the one who witnessed to Christ must be ascertained, the hatred must be ascertained. And when this element is lacking, then it goes against the perennial teaching and the juridical doctrine of the church. So, for true martyrdom, the odium fide, which is the hatred on the part of the killer or the persecutor, must be ascertained. And also, there must be irrefutable proof to readiness on the part of the martyr, the victim. And this is done through two ways. One, the outpouring of blood. And two, the readiness of the victim to be martyred. The concept of true martyrdom, as Pope Benedict the Sixteenth says in the apostolic letter, means that true martyrdom must be in conformity with what Pope Benedict the 14th says. He defines true martyrdom as the voluntary enduring or tolerating of death on account of the faith of Christ or another act of virtue in reference to God. So when the church is ascertaining what true martyrdom is, it is not only about the odium fidei which is the hatred of the faith of the persecutor or the killer. Martyrs are always killed and the haters or the persecutors always hate the faith. But what is necessary is the proof or the irrefutable proof of readiness to the martyrs, which he gives two items. One, 
the outpouring of blood and two the readiness of the victims to be martyred so my dear people what happened in Nigeria and people are saying that these people are martyrs we should take it from two perspectives of the church's teaching one the odium fidei is there hatred of the faith on the part of the persecutors two are the victims ready to accept death when these two things are ascertained then we can say that they are true matters in the catholic church there is a constant teaching and a specific teaching on what true martyrdom is there is the odium fide that is a hatred on the part of the persecutor and also the irrefutable proof of readiness on the part of the victim through the outpouring of blood and also the readiness of the victim to be martyred. Martyrdom can be well understood from its origin. It's from the Greek word martus, which means a witness. At first, in Christian literature, martyrs were only applied to Christians, to the apostles who were witnessing to Christ's public life. But as there was a transition and evolution in the term, it signifies someone who witnesses to Christ with his blood. The early Christians did this. There are parts of the early martyrs who witnessed their life to Christ. And today, martyrs, as according to the church's teaching, must have that voluntary acceptance to die for the faith. And Pope Benedict XVI, in his 2006 apostolic letter, tells us that the audience fide and the necessary irrefutable proof of readiness of the person to die for the faith must be ascertained. Thank you for watching and may God bless you.